Hi everyone, I'm Jenner. I'm the uh, service manager here at Frame Up Bikes, and today we're going to walk you through a drivetrain swap on Lehman's bike. Uh, it's been slowly upgrading his bike. He created customer bars and comes on our Sunday rides. He's currently got a Tiagra 9 speed drivetrain, and we're going to an Ultegra 11 speed drivetrain. We're going to be doing some other work as well new bar tape, new handlebars. So we, we see these kind of upgrades often with road bikes. Uh, people generally find a frame that they like and they'll, they'll start upgrading it from there. But this is a great frame and, and something worthwhile upgrading. So how are we going to tackle this thing? Where are we going to start? What are we going to do by putting a whole new Grupo on? Uh, everyone's process is a little different. I, I usually start from the front of the bike and work my way back, as goes with builds and things of that sort. So I'll probably start with stripping the bar tape, uh, marking the shifters and everything and taking those off. Uh, removing the cables, getting some new cables and housing going as far as lengths, uh, new cables onto the bike, and then moving my way back, uh, starting with the crankset, bottom bracket, chain, derailleur, cassette, and then adjustments. Sweet. So where are we at right now, Jenner? So we've got the bike fully stripped. Uh, now it's time to clean everything up, start with a uh, clean slate, and then start assembling the bike again. Uh, so right now I'm just cleaning out the bottom bracket, uh, then I'll go to cleaning the entire frame and re-greasing everything, all the threads and contact areas. So we're basically at the point now where we are clean, detailed. The bottom bracket shell has been cleaned out, inspected the frame for any cracks or damage. And now we're going to start working as we did. We disassembled from front to back and we're going to reassemble from front to back, uh, starting with the handlebars and mounting the shifters, the brakes, and working our way towards the bottom bracket and the rear derailleur. Of course, with any carbon part, we want to have fiber grip on it. So as you can see with the stem, I've given it a light greasing of some fiber grip there. And that'll help the bars from slipping once they're torqued down. Any rhyme or reason why you're starting with the brake lines? Uh, no, not necessarily. I just chose to go here. You chose five mil instead of four mil. Yeah. Like your style. We've got the shifters mounted on the handlebars. They're not torqued down yet. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. That's usually one of the last things I do just to uh, get the positioning down once we're on the ground. And that's to make sure that the bars are level and they have the correct curvature and relativity to the floor, as well as the shifter position, position for your hands uh, on the hoods. It's a nice flat surface there versus being too far down or uh, having either one of the shifters be too high or too low. On these zip bars, it's actually pretty cool. As you guys can see, there's hashes there where you can put the clamp of the shifter so you can actually get them on the same spot either side without having to measure or do anything too fancy. Focus. I'm just going to keep talking because Jenner's quiet. Usually I am, yeah. Very diligent. I just like to run one bit of electrical tape right there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind the neighbor's M5 there that you can hear from Mars. It's quite loud. <laughs> we don't mind though. We like cars. Cars and bikes are pretty cool. Yeah. So I usually like to start with the uh, one bit of electrical tape there to hold everything down. Um, that keeps the brake housing out of my way while I'm going through that. Um, just kind of makes my process a little more simple, a little easier. Some sort of electrical tape mechanic. That's right. Electrical tape and hammer, that's all I need. So now that we've got that side tidied up, we'll go ahead and just repeat the process on the other side. Cut and trim the cables to length and go from there. All right. Since you last saw us, Kind of left off here with the 
right side of the cables and housing. We've got the left side finished up now. Of course, both brakes on with uh, housing in the rear. We've got the rear derailleur housing and rear derailleur on. Of course, same goes for the front. Got that tidied up there. Nothing has been tightened down really, nothing adjusted yet. This is all just in place. Fresh bottom bracket, fresh crank set on there. We still have yet to torque that, and same goes for the rear brake. We need to do some adjustments on there. But right now what I'm doing is uh, I've got the front wheel on the bike, still working from the front to the back. We've got the brake on there, and then right now I'm just doing some brake pad adjustments with some minor cable tension on there. I'll go back in and pre-stretch the cable and then do a final cable tension adjustment once the brake pads are set, and that'll be it for the front brake, and then we'll move back. Yeah, that's a, that's a good bend. Seems like a generous bend, or... This is a gracious bend, I would call it. It's gracious. A, uh, it's a generous. Generous? Generous. It's a pun intended. This is a generous bend. Generous. You want it to be gentle, because the trailer does have to move quite a bit. Why would you do a generous bend? Well, you don't want anything sharp, because if it's a sharp angle or sharp bend, the cable has to go through that, and this is a small cable going through a very small tolerance housing, and any sharp bends will cause some pretty stiff feeling cables. Basically means bad feel at the lever. Bad right? feel at the lever, which means you're not having a fun ride. All right, so these 11 speed front derailleurs of the new generation can be a little tricky to set up. You do want to start them with uh, this piece right here backed all the way out. That's basically a uh, in inboard barrel adjuster on the derailleur. Then you'll go ahead and tighten down the cable, adjust it into the high shift mode or the high gear uh, hardest, and then from there, you can adjust that screw or that inboard barrel adjuster until this little line lines up with another little line on it in the low trim or the uh, trim in that hardest gear. And then we'll go ahead and put that fancy new front derailleur cap on after we cut the cable. And we'll use our Jaguar Pro cable crimpers to get a nice solid crimp on there. It's not going to go anywhere. All of the cables from the factory come pre-stretched, uh, at least most of them do on the higher end level, but we like to add a little extra because it's inevitable that they'll stretch while you're riding. Um, so what we do is we set up the brake pads, uh, set up the cable tension nice and tight here, and then we go ahead and squeeze the brake lever with the brake pads contacting the rim. What this is is basically simulating a bunch of brake poles and it'll eventually stretch this cable enough to where we can readjust it and get a final adjustment on that cable. So we're installing this Shimano chain. It is important to note that all Shimano chains are directional. The logo faces the outside of the bike. And everybody has a slightly different way of doing it. And this is your way. This is my way. Which is... Uh, basically... High, high, through the front derailleur, not through the rear derailleur. So that's the hardest gear in the front, easiest gear in the back. And uh, basically put where they match up or pull the chain until they, they meet up. Uh, because this is a master, not a master link, but a uh, pin chain, what you'll want to do is have a male and female connection. And then I add four pins, or that's two links to people who consider... Uh, this to here, basically in between my two thumbs being one link, uh, basically what I do is I add one, two, three, four pins. Uh, and that's just how I think about it. That's how it works in my head, and it works for me every time. And you can see the close-up of the writing on there if the camera focuses, versus if I go around to the other side of the chain, you can see the back of the links are completely blank. So the writing always faces outside. That's correct. QM5 cold start. Yes. More race cars. We'll go ahead and run it through the derailleur here. 
you've got it in the low gear up front just so there's the least amount of tension on the uh, chain itself. That makes it pretty easy for me to just stretch it and connect it there. I've got my pin in my hand. And this can be a little tricky since these chains are pre-lubricated from the factory. But you want to slide that guy in, hold it together, grab your chain tool and push this guy in. It is really important to wait and feel for that second pop and that's when it's into place. It's pretty subtle on most chains. Just back it off and you've got your pin in there. Then what you'll want to do is take a set of uh, pliers or something, some chain breakers have a tool and break that pin off so you've got that guy there. You do not want that running through your derailleur. And that's that pre-stretch procedure that you were just demonstrating on the brakes. That's right. Now, with the derailleurs, it is very important not to overstretch these guys. Uh, it's pretty easy just to go ahead and slam that shifter all the way through its gears without the derailleur moving. That will either break your cable, housing, or the derailleur itself. It is not the way to do it. Um, just go ahead and grab here, give it four clicks at a time, no more than that. And sometimes on some derailleurs, that can even be excessive. Um, so you want to make sure that you do not overstretch that. Um, again, that's, that's not, a, uh, not an easy thing to uh, get right, so just be really careful with that. Okay, so I always start with limits on a rear derailleur. Uh, same goes for the front derailleur, actually. Just the high and low limits, getting those set into place. Um, so that way I know that the derailleur will not fall off this way and won't fall off on the top side of the chain, which means that I'm going to be pretty safe on any adjustment I make from here on out. Um, just covers the wheel and, and the frame in that case. Uh, from then I'll go ahead and start doing cable tension adjustments. Uh, right now we're just going to go slowly through each individual gear and listen for any abnormalities. Um, so here we're kind of going through and taking a look. I noticed that on a few down, this one right here in particular, there was a bit of noise. Um, this is the kind of stuff we don't want to hear. Uh, and right now I'm just pushing on the derailleur to simulate that. We also don't want to hear stuff like this, where it's just kind of rubbing against gears. That's something that's not good, and you don't want to hear that while you're riding. What we are looking for is something like this, where all you can hear is the chain and the grease moving in the chain. So I am noticing that this one is hesitating a bit on the upshifts, and it's also just watching the chain starting to jump a little on the downshifts, which means that the cable is getting a little loose or is just a hair too loose. Um, so what we're gonna do is just head to that middle gear. Um, I'm gonna give it one click here of uh, additional cable tension and just re redo the gears, go through everything and make sure that's fixed the problem. If it hasn't, I'll continue to add one click of cable tension or decrease. And so how do you know when to add or subtract cable tension? So this is a good example of when to subtract cable tension. So right now, uh, that adjustment I just made is causing it to hesitate on this downshift. So when it's here, what's happening is it's making a kind of a, a grinding noise, kind of like this right here where it doesn't want to quite hop down into that low gear. Um, so from there, we'll go ahead and subtract one click of cable tension, and that should speed things up. 
And if we do continue to have further issues, we may want to look at where the high set screw is, adjust it either way, um, or mess with the cable tension. But it's very rarely the cable tension when we're in this gear here. So just to reiterate on that, when you're coming down the cassette into a harder gear, you take away cable tension. That's correct. If it's slow coming down the cassette, you would want to take away cable tension because that means there's too much cable tension and basically it's preventing the derailleur from moving down the cassette. And then vice versa, if it's hesitating going up the cassette, you add. So up, you add, down, you subtract. It's That's it. a pretty easy way to remember it. So just to wrap up the rear derailleur, uh, kind of go over how to check if your derailleur is properly set up. Uh, there's a couple tests you can do. Of course, you want to have your bike in a stand or somewhere you can pedal it. Uh, go through the gears. You're looking for that noise where it's nice and quiet. All you can hear is the chain. You do want to check the high and low set screw. So the way to do that is while pedaling slowly, um, again, if this is wrong currently, it can really damage the frame, but this is set up properly. What I'm going to do is pull on the derailleur this way, gently, and I can see that the chain isn't budging at all. It's not wanting to shift into the frame here. I can also repeat the process up top here. I'm going to slow the wheel down because if this is set up improperly, it will go into the wheel and potentially damage things. But I can push on the derailleur here towards the wheel and notice that the chain is not moving. It's not going into the wheel. The derailleur doesn't have any additional play in it. That's a safe derailleur and it's well set up. We're going to go ahead and torque these cranks down. Uh, now I've already installed the preload adjustment screw. Uh, we've put the safety uh, bit in there, um, which is just this little plastic piece that fits down into that preload screw. And we're going to tighten these guys up. They do have to be tightened evenly. The torque spec is between 13 or 12 to 14 Newton meters, which for me is 13. So we'll go ahead and get those guys tight. And just go back and forth until they're both going to be torqued at the same point. And there we go. So what do we got now? We're on to the uh, bar tape, which is one of my personal favorite parts of the bike. Um, customer cho has chosen this uh, Supercaz neon blue stars wrap, which is one of our more popular wraps. Uh, it's thicker and allows for some cool color co combinations on the bike. Comes with these uh, cool anodized blue end caps, which tighten down into the bar. They stay put forever, which is really nice. A lot of other bar caps just fall out. And that's because they expand, right? That's correct. And while we were gone, you had the bike on the floor. Yeah, so I always leave bar tape for last, even though I usually work for the, from the front of the bike to the back. Reason for that is, you know, just in case something goes wrong and I have to end up replacing one of these, last thing I want to do is take off a fresh bar tape job on there. Um, also, we can go ahead and set the bike on the ground once everything is done and level out the cables, which are the uh, shifter hoods, which is really important. The bars were a little high when we first installed them and not quite centered, so they're centered now and everything's level, ready to go. And for these bars and bar tape, we're gonna finish this bar tape right about there. Um, so we've got a little excess, as you can see, we're gonna go ahead and trim that at uh, this angle here, um, tape it down so that way it sits totally uh, parallel with the top two of the bike. Looks nice and clean that way. Tom's in a fight with CO2 cartridges. Yeah.
and that'll do it for that. We're cool. picky. We're picky about our bar tape here. Very. Mm-hmm. Of course, as you've probably seen on our Instagram, we offer quite a few different bar tape options, uh, different selections and whatnot. We've got a whole wall full of bar tape and different colors, different options, different brands. Um, of course, quite a few different options in how we wrap it as well. Um, we do with the super cas. What's nice is we can line up the stars occasionally all the way down, uh, on top. We do a tapeless bar wrap where we'll actually exclude the finishing tape, which is this stuff here and this stuff. Um, so it's just completely flush against the bars. Looks really clean and pro, um, quite a few different options on that. And the Supercaz finishing tape is actually really nice stuff to work with. It matches pretty well to the wrap itself. Mm -hmm. And that's one of our little pet peeve OCD things that Jenna and I pay attention to is a lot of these companies that that do manufacture bar tape. They have a really nice quality tape, but then the finishing tape is just a little bit lackluster and it doesn't quite match. Yeah. What I enjoy is that this is this finishing tape works a lot like electrical tape where it's decently stretchy and you can get get it to kind of follow the form of the bar tape quite nicely. A lot of the other stuff can be a bit plasticky. Doesn't really want to flex or work with you and that's always a challenge. Of course you want to end everything under the bars. That way you don't see anything. And also you can't really feel it that way. So I noticed on the drop part of the handlebars that you're wrapping from the inside out. Yeah, that's correct. Um, just because when you have your hands on the bars, you tend to, uh, I guess when you have your left hand on the bar, tend to twist this way. Uh, and what this will do with the bar tape wrapped in this direction is actually coil it tighter rather than loosening it. Um, everybody rides a little differently, so that may not be true for everyone, but at least for me and a lot of riders, it's that way. We're just going to finish up this side here. Um, same amount of excess is the key there because if it's uh, uneven, that means you have an uneven amount of wines in your bar tape, which is more of an aesthetic displeasure than anything else. Symmetrical OCD. That's right. And you're going to end up on the same part of the zip logo there as you are on the other side. Yeah. This logo is offset, though, so there is a measurement difference there. Um, if you are OCD and you do want to have your bars symmetrical, definitely measure from the center point of the stem. That'll help things out quite a bit. We're finishing shots for Tom. So, of course, before any bike goes out the door, we go ahead and go back through the bike and give it a final bolt and safety check just to make sure that everything is going to be tight and safe for the customer. It also gets a test ride, then a check over by a second technician, and then a second test ride. And that way we can guarantee our service. So that wraps up our uh, drivetrain swap on this bike. We've uh, done a full drivetrain swap, cleaned up everything, tuned up the entire bike, of course, new brakes. While we were doing that, we also went through the rest of the bike, uh, did a bunch of adjustments all throughout, um, things you may not have seen. So definitely keep that in mind when watching the video. What we have done as far as cleaning up the bike, we've gotten the cables inside the handlebars or underneath the bar tape. So looking a lot cleaner there. Definitely looking like a brand new bike. And then of course the shifting is a lot more accurate now, uh, a lot more precise, just because you have smaller jumps in between each gear. Of course you do have more gears now, which is never a bad thing in a well-shifting, well-rounded bike altogether. And that's that.